Get everyone. My name is B Agent Dan, and today we're gonna to look at this Dell Position 3560. It's a 50 inch mobile workstation from Dell and it replaces the Dell Position 3550, which I reviewed last year in 2020. So this is the 2021 model, and I will be looking through the temperatures and fan noise of this computer as well as the features of this computer and look at the speakers and also the display, and it will have a little sneak peek of the internals as well. So I will be putting timestamps along this video just to make it easy so you can actually skip to the different section that you may be interested in. Now first off, let's start off with what this computer can be configured. Now with the processor wise, it is using the 11th gen Intel Core and you can either configure it with the i5 or an i7 and they're both four cores. Now as for the RAM wise, it can go up to maximum capacity of 64 gigs and it's got two sole DIMM slots for you to actually put those RAM in. As for storage wise, this is an interesting one. It says it's got two slots of M.2 NVMe slots for your SSD, but more than likely it's just going to be one slot. And you'll see this later in when I actually open this computer up to show you the internals. As for the graphics wise, of course, it's got the Intel integrated graphics, which is the RSXE, which does pretty well by itself. And it does have a discrete graphics, which is the Nvidia Quadro T500. Now this is a new one here and it replaces the P600 for the Quadro. So that's a new little feature there. As for display wise, there's a couple of options. Now the first option is of course is the HD option which is rated at 220 nits of brightness. And then there is a full HD option. Now there's a couple of versions of that one there. And there is one that's rated at 250 nits of brightness so you can get a touch and non-touch version of the display. And there's also the new 400 nits of brightness. And then there is also the 4K version which is the Ultra HD and that's rated at 400 nits of brightness. Now all the displays you can see it's actually got quite a thin bezel on each side so very similar to the Infinity and on top it's actually quite minimum it's not like very very small and it's not very large so it's actually quite minimum and even to the bottom here it's actually quite minimum as well too and it is an aspect ratio of 16 by 9 so it's actually quite nice for especially for content consuming I must admit. Uh, I do like that 16 by 10 but this 16 by 9 is really good for professional applications as that's what this is aimed at. Measuring the color gamut coverage of the full HD touch display which is rated at 250 nit of brightness, it measured in at 57.4% sRGB coverage and 39.9% Adobe RGB coverage and 40% DCI P3 coverage. Now also tested for PWM and I'm happy to say it does not have PWM. The Dell Precision 3560 does house a 1080p webcam. Now this is great to see because this was a feature I requested to be upgraded a lot in 2020 and Dell listened to actually include full HD webcams in their laptops in 2021. Absolutely fantastic. Now the 1080p webcam does still house the privacy shutter and it's just a nice little flick of a lever on the top of the webcam and you see a physical shutter that goes over the lens and you also see it go red just to signify we've got something covering the lens so you don't need the blue tack or the electrical tape anymore which is great to see. This is a recording from the 1080p webcam from the Precision 3560. This is a video and audio unedited so you can hear and see what the quality of the webcam is like. So I've got two types of lights currently turned on. I've got one of my studio lights turned on. I also have the down lights in this room turned on as well. So I'm going to turn off one of my studio lights off and you'll hopefully see this adjust. Now I've got two down lights in front of me. I've got two down lights behind me. The two in front of me is actually quite far away and you'll see this is actually quite a dark environment. So I actually consider this a night dark environment mode. So if you're in an office environment, you should actually get have much more better light than what I am currently hitting on my face. Now I'm going to turn the Swan Street light back on again so you can see this adjust and of course better light gives you better quality of picture. Now I'd love to actually hear what your thoughts are on this webcam. So I'll put a comment below, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Let's have a look at the ports. Starting on the right hand side of the computer, we've got the security lock slot, which is the noble lock slot. And then we've got the RJ45 Ethernet port. Now that is running on a lever system. And then we've got the full size HDMI port. Now that is version 2.0. And then we've got two USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports. Now the one on the right has PowerShare and they're USB type A ports. And then we've got the headphone jack and then the micro SD card reader. 
Looking on the left hand side of the computer, we've got two Thunderbolt 4 ports, so they're USB Type C ports, and you can also connect docking stations to this as well. And then on the right of that is the exhaust vent. Looking at the rear of the computer, we've got the micro SIM card slot. There are two speakers logged on the bottom front of the computer. And when I measured the maximum volume of the speakers, it managed to measure at a peak of 87.3 decibels. So that's actually not too bad. That's actually quite loud. Uh, it's actually louder than the iPad Pro for those who have listened to an iPad Pro. So you definitely would not be struggling when you have this computer outdoors doing a meeting or doing a presentation. So that's actually quite decent for the speakers. Now, as for the sound quality of the speakers, it does have quite a bit of a bass. Not amazing amount of bass, but it's quite, quite a bit of a bass there. And as for the mids, it's actually quite strong mids and as for highs it is a bit weak on that area there and that's where I found a bit weak now as for the mids and highs I did find the muddle up a little bit I like to have a little bit more separation between the highs and mids and as for the highs like I said it wasn't really hearing that high so I guess you don't even get any distortion that sort of level there and as for the acoustics it's pretty much straight to the front there but I have found it does seems that Dell has improved on the speakers, which is great to hear. Uh, from what I believe that the speakers have been improved since the Precision 3550. So I think that's moving towards a good directions. That's for sure for the sound quality. The Precision 3560 comes with a 90 watt power adapter and the power adapter charges the computer via the USB-C port. Now as for the size of this power adapter, it's about the size of my palm so it's not too bad. It's actually quite relatively light and thin and I don't find it actually that so cumbersome to actually put in my bag or backpack. So it's actually quite a nice, decent size. The Precision 3560 has two options for the battery. There is a 63 watt hour battery, which is a four cell battery, or a 42 watt hour battery, which is a three cell battery. Now both batteries support express charge, which means you can charge the battery from zero to 35% in 20 minutes time. So that's pretty decent there if you need a quick charge. Now I did perform my battery life test on this particular unit now I've got a 63 watt hour battery in this one here and I tested in my five different modes in best performance mode it managed to get an hour and 10 minutes in better performance mode it managed to get an hour and 25 minutes in better battery life mode it managed to get three hours and 15 minutes and in battery saving mode it managed to get three hours and 30 minutes and in my media mode, it managed to get five hours. As a disclaimer, for my battery life test, I do put a very consistent workload across all the system resources. So you should expect a little bit better numbers than I would, uh, as most of the tasks and also programs wouldn't hit the system resources uh, as hard as I would. They usually just only go on and off for all the system resources. So. I was still a little bit disappointed by some of the battery life numbers that I was getting because I was expecting a little bit more than that but we do have a discrete graphic so I can kind of forgive for that one there but I would expect a little bit better life especially with using the 11th gen was a little bit better so I guess it could be the Nvidia Quadro T500 is quite power hungry there. As for the temperatures and fan noise of the Precision 3560, when I put this computer on load, I found most of the heat was concentrated near the eight and nine key. So that's near the center of the keyboard. And that's not unsurprising because that's where the processor lives underneath that area there. Now, when I took the measurements, my ambient temperatures was 21 degrees Celsius. I took my base measurement when the computer was on idle and the maximum temperature on the keyboard was 29 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, it hit a maximum of 36 decibels. And then I put the computer on 20% lows, which is pretty much what you have for average use. So that's kind of like tasks like office productivity work, streaming videos, surfing the web. And I found the maximum temperature for the keyboard was 40 degrees Celsius and as for the fan noise hit a maximum of 40 decibels and then I put the computer on 50% load and I found the maximum temperature on the keyboard was 39 degrees Celsius and as for the fan noise hit a maximum of 41 decibels then I put the computer on 100% load and the maximum temperature on the keyboard was 43 0.5 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, hit a maximum of 43 decibels. I also measured the bottom back cover of the computer 
and the hottest area on the back cover was 39 degrees Celsius. And of course the fan noise was still at 43 decibels. In terms of the temperatures and fan noise, it's actually quite decent. This computer doesn't really run that hot. You can quite happily still work on this computer and still type away on this keyboard while this computer is running 100% load. Uh, because it's quite simply, we also got quite uh, the F9 key are off centered for your film since your home keys, so that's one good thing there. And secondly, really, it's not that crazy hot when this computer is running on 100% load. As for the fan noise, I have to say it's also pretty good at 43 decibels. And the actual type of sound of that the fan noise is actually very low frequency, so it's not a high pitched sound, it's actually very low frequency, so that's actually quite good and it's not very annoying at all while you're still working while this fan does go off. Let's have a little behavior of the processor. Now this Precision 3560 is configured with an i7 1185G7. Now looking on our Intel website, its base clock speed is anywhere between 1.2 gigahertz to 3 gigahertz. Now this will be depending on its TDP. So if it's using 12 watts, it will be 1.2 or it can go all the way up to 28 watts, which will then be 3 gigahertz. Now, I've currently got this computer on film management on ultra performance mode, so you can actually have a look at that one there. And I'm going to start this processor to be 100% load, so I'm going to put the CPU, RAM, hard drive, and GPU on 100% load. I'm going to start to stopwatch here, and we're going to have a look at its processor. So currently it goes all the way up to about 4.2 gigahertz, and goes down to about 4 gigahertz, so it's fluctuating between 4 to 4.2 gigahertz and we're starting to build up some temperatures we can just see that one there and we're hitting about the 30 second mark here and we're still about 4 to about 4.2 gigahertz and now we'll just drop below the 4 gigahertz at about 3.37 second mark and it's starting to degrade here to about 3.5 gigahertz at the 45 second mark here now let's hopefully see the temperatures here and the highest temperature on each cpu is around about 95 so we're just hitting that thermal limit pretty quickly but we're not below the base clock speed yet and we hit the one minute mark and we're looking around about 3.5 or to about 3.6 gigahertz now we're approaching the two minute mark and we're looking at about 2.7 to about 3 gigahertz for the processor stability performance at the three minute mark we're looking anywhere between 2.7 one to about 2.4 gigahertz and that's its range it's sitting at 3.5 minute mark we're down to about 1.2 gigahertz to about 1.4 gigahertz and we're starting to degrade down quite a bit now and we're soon approaching our base clock speed which we're now at and we're now drop below the base clock speed at 3 minute and 45 seconds and now we're actually going way below that now before we hit the 4 minute mark so we're getting a th seriously thermal throttle quite a bit below the base clock speed of 1.2 gigahertz and of course at the 4 minute mark we're looking at about 0.6 to about 0.8 gigahertz so we're thermal throttle quite a bit here and we can see the CPU is just trying to cool itself down now by taking a bit of a break and now we're going to about 0.4 gigahertz. Now I do have the GPU running as well too, so that does contribute to the heat, but it still is just not able to handle this and I do have this computer running on ultra performance or so letting the fans run at its maximum speed and I have this computer with its most updated BIOS. I decided to actually also test out the Precision 3560 with just only the processor, RAM and hard drive on 100% load so we're not 
adding the load on the discrete graphics to try and not add extra heat from the discrete graphics because that can actually create a lot of heat and I was just curious about that now I still have the thermal management on ultra performance and I do still have it connected to mains power now I've had this computer on 100% level of processor RAM and hard drive for over an hour and the speed of the processor is ranging anywhere between 2.6 to about 3.3 gigahertz so it actually varies between all those speeds there so it's not really stable at one particular speed so but it is at least doing a lot better in thermal compared to when we had the discrete graphics so the internal core temperatures are anywhere about 65 to about 69 degrees celsius so it's doing a lot better and so this is again running on a uh, for over an hour with we're really testing out the processor so it's doing a lot better when the discrete graphics is not put on a hundred percent load so i'm thinking yes, if you actually put this computer just a little load on the processor on the discrete graphics it will do still do not too bad there but definitely it won't be when we put the discrete graphics on 100% low that would really hurt this thermal temperature of the processor so hopefully that will help you guys out just to give you guys a little bit different information there that's all let's have a look at the keyboard the precision 3560 does house a full-size keyboard with the number pad on the right hand side so it's great to see that dell has still include the number pad because so you can actually do your data entries and a lot of professional software still do run a lot of numbers which is actually great to see they're still thinking about a lot of the professionals for this it is aimed for professionals after all anyway now as for the key each individual keys, it's got quite a bit of a key travel and you can see it's actually not that clicky and loud. Uh, so, it's, and it's also when you actually depress each keys, it's actually quite a, quite a bit of a soft, spongy feel to it. Uh, it still bounces quite quite quick up as well too. Now each inch of the key's got a bit of smooth texture to each one's there, and it is backlit. Now this one is backlit. You can get an option without backlight. I don't know why you would do that, but it, you can get option in. So some people have asked me from why that they don't have backlight, but that's because you can configure it in many different ways. There and backlit is one of the things you can configure. The backlight has three settings: off low and high and the power button is located on the very top right hand corner of the keyboard and it has the optional fingerprint scanner integrated into it and as for the trackpad it is actually quite a nice decent sized trackpad it may look a bit small on camera uh, and also but it is is a full size keyboard you must have to remember but it's actually quite a very nice decent size and i find i wasn't didn't have my palm resting on the trackpad when you actually have your home keys and typing away as well too now as for the trackpad texture wise it is quite rough uh, it's about the same sort of feel as the chassis a little bit more rough than that but it actually registered quite nicely still even with moist hands as well too so it actually registered quite nicely and it is mechanical so it is you can depress it at the bottom here and it's hinged at the top here as well too and of course it's multi-gesture as well too so i find it's actually quite nice it's actually quite sturdy as well too now as for the build construction of this computer here it is pretty much just i'm gonna say it's just plastic that's pretty much it uh, all the way through it's got this nice sort of silver look to it uh, so it looks quite premium uh, and these things are built to be lasting for a fair bit and it is quite durable as well too now as for the doesn't have too crazy amount of depressing for the keyboard and i'm putting quite a bit of weight on that as well too and as for not too much bend on these things but these things are you know these things are very very dribble i have to admit now as for the hinge wires i didn't really have too much as you can see it holds in quite a lot uh, so you do need to use two fingers to actually open it up now the hinge itself is plastic as well too but i have to find that this hinge here is quite good because even when i just hold this up and i'll just wiggle it's actually clamping quite hard onto that so i just find that this is got a quite good build construction uh, for this Dell Precision 3560. Let's have a look at the internals. First off, we'll start with the battery. So I've got the 63 watt hour battery. It's a four cell battery. And to disconnect the battery, just pull this lever here 
and that will disconnect the battery. It's a good idea to do that if you're working inside the computer or just troubleshooting some power issues. And it is held in by three Phillips head screws of underneath to speed up the time and I'm just going to lift this up for the people who want to see what's underneath the battery. So we've got the CMOS battery here and then there also the NFC module lives underneath here. Now you don't need to disconnect this battery if you need to take care of the CMOS battery. It is, you just unplug this one here and that will disconnect the CMOS battery if you're having sort some clock issues. Now above here is the WAN card module and then we've got the Wi-Fi module right here and then we've got two sold in slot for the RAM and then we've got the first slot of M.2 for the SSD. Now interesting enough it does say it's got a second slot for M.2 for the SSD and with this module here you'll see I've got the I don't actually have the header itself but I can see this is where it would normally sit the screws probably around here uh, but I don't actually have the headers for it so in some of the precision 3560 it may actually have that so it's a good idea to check on the spec sheet it does say it could have the second slot but in this one it's not configured and as you can see that so we've got the heat sink here of course and then we've got the system fan right here as well too I did perform the benchmarks for this particular Precision 3560. Now this one's configured with an i7 1185G7 with 32 gigs of RAM and 512 gig hard drive and the NVIDIA Quadro T500. So I'll put up the scores for Passmark, CityBench R23, PC Mark, 3D Mark, Crystal Disk Mark, MATLAB 2020B, Pugin Photoshop, Inspect View Pref. I also ran the usual gaming benchmarks like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Far Cry New Dawn, and Mortal Phoenix Rising. Overall with Dell Position 3560, I have seen some improvements like the full HD webcam which is great to see, and the speakers I think they have got been improved, and also the option to actually have a more brighter full HD display which is that 400 nits of brightness. But I am a little worried about the thermals, especially when you're actually using the discrete graphics, it gets kicked into there, you're actually getting quite a bit of thermal throttling. Uh, that is something I like to see maybe Dell have a look at or even maybe do a BIOS update to have a look at that because that is a little bit worrying, especially for mobile workstations which are designed to actually work for long extended periods of time. So that's a little bit the only thing I am a little bit worried about the Dell Position 3560, but else it's a really decent computer and it has definitely worked quite good as well too. Now I hope you find this video informative or enjoyed it. If you did, or even to support my channel, smack that like button for me. And if you haven't done already, subscribe to my channel by hitting the subscribe button. I do try to upload a new video every week. And just remember, imperfections in life makes it beautiful and interesting. And I'll see you next video.